for for people that don't understand what quantum mechanics even means, give them just like a little bit of that and then yeah. explain many worlds theory. Yeah, uh, good. This is what I'm here to do. So, Thank you. You know, an electron, take an electron. Um, quantum mechanics should apply to the entire universe, but it becomes unmistakable when you look at little tiny things, right? So we always are talking about electrons or atoms and so forth. If you were Isaac Newton, before there was quantum mechanics, there was classical mechanics. In classical mechanics, an electron is a point it has a position, a location in space, and it has a velocity. It's moving somewhere. And from that, you can predict what's going to happen, okay? Quantum mechanics says, no, no, no. The electron has a wave function. And the wave function has this weird property that when you're not looking at it, it's a wave. It's all spread out or it's localized somewhere, but it obeys an equation, the Schrodinger equation. So far, so good. Just like regular physics, there's a thing, the wave function. It obeys an equation, the Schrodinger equation. You can predict what's going to happen next. But the weird thing about quantum mechanics is that there's a whole separate set of rules for what happens when you look at the thing. Is it the act of measuring that changes things? Well, this is the puzzle, okay? This is what is called the measurement problem of quantum mechanics. The rules say when a system is observed, when it is measured, its state, its wave function changes dramatically, suddenly, and unpredictably. Now, let me ask you this. How do we know this based on if, if you're measuring it and it changes? How do we know because we didn't measure it before? Like, what, what observations are we making that we understand the state of it before it's measured without measuring it? Forget about where the electron is located and think about the electron is spinning right? Okay. The electron is spinning just like the Earth spins. It's really exactly like that. It's like a little spinning top, except when you measure the spin, you can sort of send the electron through a magnetic field and it will get deflected either up or down, depending on whether it's spinning spin up or spin down. You only ever get one of two answers. It's either going up or going down. It's nowhere in between. This is an empirical measured fact, okay? Um, so that's a part of quantum mechanics. That's, that's the quantum fact, that there's discrete set of possible answers to this question. Is it spinning clockwise or counterclockwise? Yes or no. It's just those two possibilities, nowhere in between. So if, you're, if you have a magnetic field that is oriented vertically, send your electron through it. It gets deflected up. You say, oh, it's spin up. So now I've measured its spin. Now I know what its state is. If I send it through another magnetic field or oriented vertically, it will always be deflected up every single time. We know what it is. We're going to measure it. Measuring it in this case doesn't change it. It's in exactly that state. We know it, okay? Now let's send it through a magnetic field that is oriented horizontally. So it's going to be deflected either right or left. We know exactly what state it's in. It's spinning this way. But when you send it through that magnetic field that's oriented horizontally, it gets deflected left or right 50-50, unpredictably. There's no way we can predict it. Mm. And then once it is, so okay, now it's been spinning up. You measured its spin left, let's say. Send it through another magnet that is going vertically. And now it's 50-50 again. It could be spin up or spin down. <laughs> so somehow, even though we knew exactly what state it was in, we couldn't predict what would happen next. That is part of quantum mechanics. So the act of sending it through these things where it makes it vertical or horizontal, in, it, what, is, what is happening to it when it's going through these things? So in quantum mechanics, what we say is that it's not that we don't know – whether the electron is spinning clockwise or counterclockwise, um, it can be in a superposition of both. That's just the spin version of the position of the electron can be spread out in a, in a wave, right? It's, it's truly not just that we are lacking some knowledge. It's that the knowledge really isn't there. And again, this is how we teach quantum mechanics in textbooks. And then I'm going to correct it because many worlds is much better. But okay. this is the standard textbook version. There's a wave function. The wave function for a spin is it's either up or down or some combination. And then there's a rule that says when you measure the spin, you only get up or down. You don't see the wave function. Just like the cloud that you have for the electron's position, when you look at it, you see it at a location. So another way to, get, to make the same argument is take a little piece of – I have an, a nice little uh, image of this when I give talks – a little piece of uranium. So it's a radioactive uh, – little chunk of metal, and you put it in a bubble chamber. So it is emitting radioactive particles, and you detect the particles. You can see a little streak of, uh, of motion when the particle leaves the uranium, okay? Well, like I said, when you're not looking at it, 
this electron is supposed to obey an equation, the Schrodinger equation. And you can ask what the prediction is when a, when a radioactive nucleus decays and gives off an electron, what is its wave function going to do? What is the wave function of the electron going to be? And the answer is it goes off in a spherical wave. It goes off in all directions at once. Evenly. Yeah. All directions evenly. But you never see that. Is you that roughly based on the shape of the piece of uranium? Does it vary? No, because the electron gets from one individual nucleus of an atom, right? So the, the, what, the, what the uranium is doing doesn't matter. It's just that one atom matters. And the easiest thing for the electron to do is just to go out in a sphere. It doesn't have to. It can go out in higher energy states. But the point is, it's not going out in a straight line. But when you look at it, you see a straight line, right? That's the fundamental mystery of quantum mechanics, that how we describe the thing when we're not looking at it is different than what we see when we look at it. Okay, so hit us with this many worlds theory. Okay, so think about this electron. You're gonna, you, you say that it could be either spin up or spin down. It's a combination of both. That's its wave function. You measure it, you only ever see spin up or spin down. So Copenhagen says that's because the wave function suddenly changed, snapped into place when you observed it. Don't ask me what it means to observe something. That's not what Copenhagen lets you ask. Okay. Many worlds says what you're missing is two things. Number one... You're a quantum system. Mm. You're obeying the rules of quantum mechanics. You're made of atoms and electrons and so forth. You have a wave function too, okay? So you're secretly treating yourself as a classical thing when you make that measurement, but you really should be treating yourself quantum mechanically, right? That's one thing. And the other thing is uh, something that Einstein invented, namely called entanglement. When quantum mechanics says there's a wave function for a system, it doesn't say there's a separate wave function for every particle, right? It says that there's only one wave function for the whole universe. So the way I like to say it is, imagine two particles come in and bounce off of each other. Either one has a wave function and it's you know unpredictable exactly what angle it's going to go off at. So both of them, both of the particles that go off, you don't know where they're going. But because momentum is conserved, you know, if they came in at equal velocities, they'll go out at equal velocities and in opposite directions. If you measure one, then you know where the other one is going, right? That's entanglement. The observed state of one system can be related to the observed state of another system. So those are the two ingredients. You're a quantum system, and quantum systems can be entangled with each other. So Hugh Everett, who was a graduate student when he invented this idea in the 1950s, said, look, when you measure that electron, what happens physically? Like, forget about you're a person, you're conscious, all of that BS. Like, you're a physical system, you obey the Schrodinger equation. You, you are a quantum mechanical system, you obey the laws of physics. So you look at the electron, your wave function changes. It used to be you're just a person doing whatever you do, but then after you look at the electron, you become entangled with it. And it splits, so there is one part of the wave function that says the electron was spinning clockwise and you measured it spinning clockwise. And there's another part of the wave function that says the electron was spinning counterclockwise and you saw it spinning counterclockwise. Now, everybody knows this. Like that, that far, it's not controversial at all. That's clearly the prediction of the equations of quantum mechanics. But everyone else said, well, that means that I'm some weird combination of I saw it spinning one way and I saw it spinning the other way, but I've never felt that way. When I look at real electrons, I see them one way or the other. That can't be right. That can't be the final answer. The wave function must somehow collapse. And Everett said, no, what you're missing is there's now two separate worlds. Both of those part of the wave function are real but they're different worlds. They will never interact with each other again. What happens in one part of the wave function will not affect what happens in the other part. So now there's a version of you that saw the electron spinning clockwise, and there's another version of you that saw it spinning counterclockwise. And that's just taking seriously the prediction of quantum mechanics. It's not adding any extra stuff, any extra worlds, anything like that. That is the part where my brain broke. All right. The, the idea that there's a you that observes it going clockwise and a, a you that observes it going in a different direction, like that is so hard to understand. <laughs> now, let's hit, hit the brakes on the woo again. Yeah. Because people would like to believe that there are, I mean, are there an infinite number of yous existing at the, at the exact same time, making various choices which send you off in the different directions? So, number one, we don't know if it's infinite number or just really big. But there's certainly a really, really big number. It's big enough to be, you know, 
big enough for whatever you want. But it's not everything. It's not the theory does not say everything happens somewhere, right? The theory says the Schrodinger equation is obeyed. There's an equation that is obeyed. So electrons will never convert into protons because electrons are negatively charged and protons are positively charged. And nowhere in the Schrodinger equation can you violate the conservation of charge, right? So there's plenty of things that don't happen, but then there are plenty of things that do happen. And some things are more likely than others for you to experience. So again, it's it's sort of a, uh, you know, it's a mind bendy thing, but it's a straightforward prediction of the equations and it doesn't affect our lives. It, it, there's no rule that says, you know, to be a moral person, to be a good utilitarian and make the world happy, knowing that the world, the wave function is branching into multiple copies, I should act differently somehow. It's It's exactly the same as it would be in the ordinary world. So and you are the ordinary world, no matter how copies, how many copies of you there are, or how many versions of you there's there are. There's nothing. So when all these copies are being made, there's no essence of you that is traveling through one of the copies, right? Like right. all of these people are separate people. So I, I use the analogy: it's like identical twins. They were the same zygote or whatever, and now they're different people. Okay, so that's the same thing. Like you're you now, and if you hit the button and branch the wave function, there'll be two different people, both of whom used to be you, but they're not the same person anymore because different things happen to them. 